Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We Ching did a post update on Bragtooth. If you're not familiar with Bragtooth, that's a set of vulnerabilities that was released two months ago that affects a large range of Bluetooth devices. As typical for these kind of vulnerabilities, multiple chipsets are affected by these vulnerabilities. And of course, these chipsets then end up in all kinds of different devices and end users brand so it's sometimes hard to tell whether or not a particular bluetooth device is using a particular chipset and whether or not it's vulnerable making patching a uh, pretty difficult for these type of vulnerabilities because you also need updated firmware to start out with in this uh, diary that we Jing uh, published, uh, we do have a table with all the different uh, chipsets and what the current status is, depending on whether or not vulnerable or whether there is a fix available. The tool that was used to find these vulnerabilities in the proof of concept exploit has also been released as of this weekend. So exploitation of these vulnerabilities may become more real, which of course puts additional pressure on actually getting these vulnerabilities patched. For an end user, often you find these patches being included in operating system updates. So just make sure best you can that the operating system of your uh, devices and such is up to date. And researchers at Grimm took a closer look at Nagios, the network monitoring tool, and found about a dozen different vulnerabilities ranging from cross-site scripting all the way up to remote code execution and even privilege escalation. The problem with network monitoring servers is that first of all, every network has one and then the server itself often does run with elevated privileges or has even the ability to reach out to other systems on the network using elevated privileges. And that's sort of what was exploited here. What I kind of like about this blog post, it doesn't just list the vulnerabilities. It also shows how these vulnerabilities can be chained in order to escalate privileges and essentially go all the way from a cross-site scripting vulnerability to root level access on the system. Cross-site scripting is often an underestimated vulnerability and it often depends on where the cross-site scripting does happen, who is being exposed to the cross-site scripting and well, what kind of payloads can be deployed with it. In this case, because the Nagios server is usually used by administrators of the network, so it is a more elevated uh, privilege kind of user group in the first place, exposing them to these cross-site scripting payloads, of course, is particularly dangerous. In particular, in this case, these cross-site scripting payloads can then be used to leverage other Nagios vulnerabilities in order to get full root access to that server. So pretty neat blog post, in particular for the penetration testers out there. I think uh, even if you are defending particular web applications, you probably want to take a look at these vulnerabilities as well uh, to learn from them. And while the network people that are listening are probably familiar with network monitoring tools for the business people, we have business analytics tools. And just like network monitoring tools, they use web-based interfaces. Hosek, uh, published a report about a security assessment that they did that involved uh, Pentao Business Analytics, which is produced by Hitachi Vantara. As part of their analysis, they found uh, six different vulnerabilities, two they rated critical, one a remote code execution, and secondly, an unauthenticated SQL injection of vulnerability. If you have this system installed, please patch it. But the real reason I mention it is this is the type of system that's easily forgotten and not well maintained. So a double check 
you know, what are your business people using in order to sort of monitor business activity and do analytics like this and make sure these systems are up to date. They're really sort of you know, round jewels when it comes to, for example, a ransomware attack. You don't want them to get hit. Uh, you don't want attackers to manipulate the data that uh, your decisions rely on. So double check what you're using and if it's properly secure and up to date. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.